Hey guys, Jason here, back for another video. So the topic for today is about IELTS. So what is IELTS? IELTS is like a, uh, a test, I guess, to know where your level of English is at. It's like an English proficiency test. So I discovered IELTS when I applied to go to Australia for, to continue my study in university. So they required me to have an overall score of 6.5 in IELTS. So yeah, I achieved that 6.5 and I got to university in Australia for three years. And I stayed there for another year, so total of four. So I took my first IELTS exam in uh, the Philippines where I got an overall score of 6.5. And then when I got to Australia, I applied for like after after university, you can apply to stay there to work for two months, two years, but that somehow didn't work out with me. And with that, they also required me to take the IELTS exam again. No, wait, they didn't require me to take it again. But my previous uh, exam result, IELTS exam result, um, was expired, so I had to retake the IELTS. So here I found a photocopy of my IELTS in Australia. All right, this is my score. As you can see, like I did the worst in writing because I didn't know what I was writing about. So yeah, when I took the exam, I didn't prepare or anything. I just like go online and search for what to do on each part of it. So luckily I got speaking 7.5 as you can see, listening also 7.5. So speaking and listening, I'm good. But uh, when it comes to like uh, reading, I'm okay, I guess. And writing, terrible. I did terrible. <laughs> So yeah, this was like, uh, I took this in 2016, so this is like three years ago, September. So yeah, three years, almost four years. Hmm. So when I got back to Vietnam, I found out that like, if you want to get a good job or if you want to get into a go good company, you should have like, take IELTS to prove that you are good in English. Okay. Like, uh, it looks good on your resume if you have like an IELTS of... Uh, seven and above That's what I heard at least so yeah seven overall score and above. I'm good. I guess I'm Not that good, but I'm qualified enough Recently, I've been doing this uh, IELTS speaking part of part two and part three with a friend. She is uh, Going to take the IELTS exam in a couple of months. So she needed my help to like practice speaking with her so I've recorded it and here's the part of it if you want to have a look on the speaking part and I plan to open up a uh, like not a class I'm not gonna teach you about IELTS but I'm gonna be like a person who you can practice your speaking with because you know it's it's nice to have someone to practice with before the exam so that you won't feel as nervous when you go to the exam Okay, so I will open up class. I will have all the information uh, probably on my Facebook. So follow me on Facebook if you are interested in practicing your IELTS speaking part two and three. So link in the description for my Facebook. Follow me and uh, send me a message or something. All right, so here's the part for the speaking. I, I do it online over Skype. So you won't see our faces or anything, just our conversation through Skype. Let's go. Can you hear me? Okay, okay, yes. Okay. So today we're gonna practice IELTS part two and three. So I have here a topic about a friend at school and a language you would like to learn, aside from English. Okay, so okay. let's do this a friend at school first. So for the second part, you will have two minutes, I mean, one minute to prepare and then you will have to speak for two minutes. All right, okay. I will start a timer on the other screen. Okay, there. All right, you... Do we have to ask you today? Yeah, yeah, we'll do as usual. Oh, okay. No. Okay, so <laughs> your one minute starts now. A few moments later... Okay, time is up. You may start speaking now. All right. So, uh, I honestly I don't have uh, too many friends since I only talk to those who can support my studies. 
Uh, but this is a very special case that uh, in high school, as I can remember, uh, I study in a, a pretty uh, the, the the standard class of our school, and there was a girl appears uh, to be a, to be the new student, and uh, I remember that at first time I only remember her because that she had the same name as mine, uh, but uh, we didn't play together until we got to college. That uh, only uh, I only known her in my new class in the university, and then we started to talk together. Uh, and as soon as I as I realized that she was pretty, she was totally opposite to me, uh, from all of her, from her appearance to all her personalities. We we're totally against each other. I mean, we are totally different. Uh, but it seems like uh, to me that uh, something opposite to me uh, seems to be better uh, for my life because whenever I I think about positive things, uh, or I suffer for, from any kind of problems. She will always stand by my back uh, because that she didn't think like me. She uh, didn't have the way to solve the problem like me. So we, she show show me uh, the ropes to get through everything. Uh, but uh, sadly, now she is in Ho Chi Minh City where. Uh, don't usually we, we don't meet each other anymore uh, but uh, I for me that she is one of the best motivation that I have had we still keep in touch and I hope that maybe after the okay you're two whole... minutes up <laughs> okay okay yeah I you were about to end but end earlier <laughs> right it's okay yeah okay um it... follow-up questions on that, so part three. Uh, what kind of influences does your friends have on you? Uh, well, as I mentioned before, we're to uh, we're totally opposite. Mm -hmm. So the influence that I uh, think is the best that I the best uh, w thing I can have received from her is her positiveness. I mean, uh, I'm a kind of introvert so uh, she don't mind she doesn't mind about others people think of her but uh, that is the kind of energy that helping me get through all this sadness and boredom okay energy that helping me. Um, just like tapping down the thing that you say that I find a bit wrong. Like, okay. uh, I only known her. Is should be know her, right? I know. And then, uh, kind of energy, that's helping me, right? Helps me, right? Or that helps me is also correct. So yes. put the S for <laughs> on which everyone. Yeah, just minor mistakes. Okay. Uh, okay. Next question. Have you ever gave up to peer pressure? And can you explain how you handle peer pressure? Uh, can you explain what is peer pressure? Uh, peer pressure. It's like the things that your a group of friends, the a group of friends that you are in, are doing, but you are not doing it with them, and then they are pressuring you to do the same with what they're doing. Like, like for example, smoking. They, all of your friends are smoking, but you are not. So you see it that as like uh, you are not fitting into the, uh, that group. So you try to do the same in order to fit in. So that is peer pressure. Okay. Um, can, can you repeat a question, please? So have you ever gave up to peer pressure? And can you explain how you handled peer pressure? Mm. So I have a group of friends. Uh, there, uh, there are 10 people. There are 10 of them in my group, but I only uh, actually get pretty close to mine as my best friend I said earlier uh, so I uh, it's hard the feeling uh, trying to fit in is something that I've been suffering for many years I tried a lot uh, to uh, be like them to act, act like them but somehow I still keep my style 
And I think the best way for me that uh, I I have done is to be patient and maybe to listen to them more, to uh, maybe get the balance between the ideas and have the fin- final decisions after all. Mm-hmm. But have you ever found yourself like changing your style just to fit in with them? I always change. I, uh, whenever I meet a new person, I always I kind of influenced uh, by them. Uh, if they're positive, I will uh, be. Uh, I will show my positive po- positiveness like them. But uh, vice versa, I will uh, always try to fit in this different different circumstances. So it's pretty hard for me to. Uh, figure it out who I really am, and uh, try to be a uh, eunuch. Okay, so you are always changing, right? Yeah. So, do you think that is a good thing or a bad thing that you are always changing yourself and you do not have like your own kind of like uh, personality that could like have a an influence on others? Well, definitely that is, that is bad. Uh, um, I'm, I'm totally agree with the idea that uh, the idea that being yourself and uh, keeping your style is better than uh, trying to adapt without knowing what exactly uh, the, the true goal of yourself. So uh, I, I mean that for me it's been a very tough journey. Uh, so I, I mean that um, what was the question again? Like, uh, you're always changing yourself, so you don't have a strong personality that could influence others. So yes, that's bad, right? Or is yes. It... <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll move on. Uh, do you think your friends are the contrib? You kind of answered this already, uh, but I'll read the question anyway. Do you okay. think your friends are the contributing factor in shaping to who you are today? Yeah, of course. Um. For me, I've learned a lot from people around me, especially my friend. When I change my environment, uh, especially getting into the first uni- the the university, that was a very uh, amazing time. Uh, the, although there were some drawbacks, but I shape my personality and change my uh, critical thinking based on all the opinions of all my friends and all their actions throughout the year. Cool. Okay. Yep, that's it for this topic. Now my turn. Okay. I guess. So now you have one minute. All right. One eternity later. Our time is up. So you may begin. Okay. So I had this friend uh, during high school when I got into ninth grade. I transferred to a new school, so that's when I met met him. Uh, his name is Edsel. He's a Filipino, but he was born in America, so he speaks English really well. So I try to imitate uh, the way he speaks as well. So, yeah, uh, he is a bit chubby because he said that he's had diabetes. Uh, it runs in the family, so he can't help it. <laughs> and um, we, uh, I became friend with him uh, when I discovered that he play chess so one time he was playing chess with another classmate in classroom and I was interested in that Uh, I myself also play chess so I asked him if we can play a match of uh, chess together Uh, he was really good in chess so I never got the chance to defeat him even once Uh, yeah and so we became friends after that and we discovered that uh, we have many more the same uh, similar interests such as uh, gaming and anime and all that so uh, we would share with each other what like what kind of anime we watch and what games uh, we play so we can play with each other yeah and uh, I was friend with him since 2009 yeah that was when I was in ninth grade and then when we got to into university uh, we both moved to the same place too. He's kind of far away. He go to another university, but every weekend I would go to his place and we would play games with each other. Yeah. So during university, that was like the most fun moments. Like I would look forward to weekends so that I could just go to his place and play games with each other, like online games, computer games. Yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, right now he is uh, in America, uh, and we still have contact with each other. We would chat with each other and play games once in a while if we find some game that we are both interested in. And yeah, I would say like he is a friend who has uh, a big influence on me when it comes to like speaking English and gaming and others too. So yeah, that's why I remember him. Okay, thank you. That is more than two minutes. Yeah, I know. How, how long was that? <laughs> uh, two minutes and nearly 20 seconds, I guess. Wow, okay. Okay, so I... Uh, th- just a second, I will find a question for you. So, mm-hmm. uh, let's start with several qu- follow-up questions uh, since we talk about friends. Mm-hmm. So, do you think childhood friendship can last for long? Oh... Uh... It depends, I guess. If you have the same interest, then yeah, you could, like, with the friend I just told you about, we have the same interest, so we continue to be friends with each other and play with each other. But I ha- I also have some childhood friends where we don't have, I mean, like, we're f- still friends on Facebook, but we don't talk to each other anymore because uh, our interests kind of part ways. Like, we don't have the same common interests any- anymore, so... I don't know what to talk about. So, yeah, we stop being friends. So, is it important that people should have good friendship while at work? Definitely. Uh, friendship is good everywhere. In school, at work, at home, a- everywhere. Because uh, having good friends, meaning that you could share your thoughts with them, right? And uh, you could share the same interests with them. So, and... It makes life much more enjoyable you know, when you have this uh, people around you that share the things that you could do with each other. So it makes life more fun. So yeah, definitely. Friends are important everywhere, not just at work or at school. Okay, so do you think companies should let the employees gather together for socializing in order to be successful? Definitely, that is. I think companies should encourage that. I think that's the reason why sometimes companies held uh, events such as team building events, yeah, just to get uh, their employees to know each other and work with each other and be friends. And because once they're friends, they will collaborate and they will work on bigger projects more. Like when you know each other, it's easier to work than when you don't know each other, right? So that's why. They do team buildings, and in Japan, in some culture like Japan, they even have like after work they have to go out with their colleagues to drink and to eat, yeah, just to be, I don't know, just to create that bond of friendship, so that it will be easier to uh, for them at work. Okay, so is it easy to make friends now as compared to the past? Um. With technology, I think it with the and the um, younger generation too. I think for them, it's they will have a bit harder time because they focus too much on uh, social media too much. Like they have their head on their phone, their eyes on their phone all the time, so they don't look up and see what's around them anymore. So probably that's one factor that hinders them from making new friends, but. If they uh, are conscious of that factors and that problem, then uh, they would like try to like go out more and at school make more friends in real life. Because friends on social media, they haven't realized it yet, but they are not real. They will eventually realize that. And uh, real life friends, friends that you actually meet face to face and talk to each other, and not just to through texting, those are like your real friends, like friends that will help you during the times when you need help. But okay. uh, yeah, with social media, I think it's easier to keep in contact with your friends, even if you're far away. Thank you guys for watching that. Um, I appreciate that you watch until the end. If you're Again, uh, if you are interested in practicing your IELTS speaking with me, just hit me up on Facebook and we will arrange a time for the practice. 
I say practice because I'm not going to teach you what you are going to say. I'm just there to like listen to you and maybe uh, fix some of your grammarly mistake. Just that it. That's it. I'm not gonna teach you what to say. Or maybe we can share with each other more vocabularies. Like I will use all the vocabulary that I know, and like we will just like practice with each other and teach each other new vocabularies as well. I guess. Yeah. Alright, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. See ya!